I think so I'm right. there was some setting issue uh, it is not live on the url which i wanted to be but uh, i think i am live i can see myself live sorry for such a fiasco this is the session one of the mcq live session and uh, let's get started so for anyone who is tuning in for the first time i am dr abhishek your medico apps mcq live quiz master and these are the sessions which we have planned for this week so today uh, is the session 1 so we will have lot many sessions of mcq discussion and before we start a quick reminder to subscribe to the channel if you have not channel give this video a thumbs up and you know if you have any queries on this video you know you can just write it in the comment if you like this video you can share it and there is an important saying i will start with uh, before we start this mcq live session and this is the inspiration for me to start uh, this live sessions many students told me sir whatever you taught in the theory class we forgot in the examination but whatever you taught uh, in the mcq format we remembered it so that is the inspiration why i have started this mcq series session and uh, uh, every day at around 4:15 so four sessions in a week i will take at around 4:30 in the evening and this will be i'll be discussing around 10 to 15 high uh, concepts so that you can learn the question as well as concepts regarding it and there is a important saying which i will tell you pothi padhi padhi jagmu aap pandit bhayanak hoye gupta sar se mcq parhe so pandit hoye which means there is volumes of text written but even if you read everything you will forget everything but if you solve mcq with me you will remember Ah, uh, you know everything to answer questions in your examination. So having said that, let's start with the first question for today, and this is the first question. So this question is a biochemistry question on, and you have been given a line weaver plot. Okay, so basically it's uh, on enzyme substrate interaction, and what is the plot? This plot which you have given is it for a competitive inhibition? Is it for a non-competitive inhibition? is it for an allosteric inhibition or both b or c so on x axis you have got 1 uh, by km plotted and on y axis you have got 1 by vmax plotted so this is basically uh, the line weaver plot now before i answer it let me take you some theory about uh, this question so that you remember now when we talk about enzyme inhibition okay enzyme inhibition remember anything which interferes with the active site anything which interferes with the active site will change the value of km agreed anything which interferes with the active site will change the km if it is not interfering with the active site okay it will not interfere with the km and anything which actually destroys the enzyme okay this will change the vmax agreed is everybody clear about this so anything which interferes with the active site will change the km anything which destroys the enzyme will change the vmax now let's look at the options in competitive inhibition we know that there is no destruction of uh, the enzyme okay only the sub, uh, substrate and the inhibitor reversibly combine but the com combination is at the active site so it will so if i have to plot active site and destruction of enzyme so yes it interferes with the active site but it does not destroy the enzyme let's look at non competitive inhibition so no in non competitive inhibition we know that it does not combine on the active site it you know uh, goes and attach the inhibitor goes and attach on any other site other than the active site so active site is not disturbed but it leads to the destruction irreversible destruction of the enzyme okay let's look at the next option which is given 
allosteric inhibition now in allosteric because clearly it is written it is going to attach on some other site okay so active site is not interfered and yes does it lead to uh, destruction of the enzyme no again it's an it, you know it it is a reversible kind of inhibition so when we look at this so we know now if we go back to our question in competitive inhibition we have seen that active site yes but destruction of enzyme no non competitive active site no destruction of enzyme yes allosteric inhibition no it does not attach on the active site it does not lead to the destruction so here if you see the x intercept is same which means the km value is not changing and km value is not changing which means this particular inhibitor is not going to affect the active site clear so this option is ruled out any doubt now if you see the y intercept is increased which means the velocity maximum is coming down which means there is a destruction of enzyme so only here there is a destruction of enzyme so the correct answer will be b is everybody clear once again i'll take you through the theory very very critical theory of inhibition when we talk about inhibitions there are four different types of inhibition competitive inhibition non competitive inhibition okay then we have got allosteric inhibition okay and then we have got suicide inhibition okay is it clear so in competitive inhibition basically the inhibitor attaches on the active site but it is a reversible so there is no destruction of enzyme in non competitive it gets attached on the non active site but there is a irreversible okay in allosteric it is on the non active site but it is reversible and in suicide inhibition it is on the active site but irreversible okay so whenever there is on the active site remember the km will change okay whenever it is irreversible remember the vmax will come down so this is the concept you have to use in this particular question is it clear everybody so let's look at the next question and this again is a exam question it's a previous exam question which of the following is an enzymatic marker for mitochondria okay uh, there is a live chat button so all of you can just type in your answer so your option a is adenyl cyclase glucose 6 phosphatase uh, acid phosphatase atp synthase so which of them is a purely enzymatic marker for mitochondria anyone can type it the correct answer okay so let's look at each one of them one by one so we know that atp synthase where do you think it will be present so atp synthase we know it is on mitochondria one of the easiest option so four is correct so these two goes out of window this is how you are going to solve exam you are not going to solve the entire question and then look for the option so it is one four or only one four okay let's talk about adenyl cyclase anyone knows where is adenyl cyclase form okay so it is a plasma membrane marker remember it's a plasma membrane marker so this also will be gone out the correct answer will be b is it clear glucose 6 phosphatase it will be in the endoplasmic reticulum acid phosphatase anyone remember this will be in lysosome okay so all the organelle along with your marker you have to remember so again i am telling you plasma membrane there are certain markers which you have to remember adenyl cyclase was asked sodium potassium atpase is also present in the plasma membrane five nucleotidase is also present in the plasma membrane endoplasmic reticulum glucose 6 phosphate phosphate golgi apparatus galactoside transferase mitochondria atp synthase and lysosome acid phosphatase this again is a very high yield uh, point which will keep coming in your examination let's look at another question which appeared in inict which of the following is incorrect now remember it is asking about a incorrect option so ast is to alt is less than one is indicative of viral hepatitis ast to alt greater than 2 is indicative of alcoholic liver disease ggt is elevated specific to alcoholic liver disease and alt is more specific to liver biomarker than ast so if you know the correct answer write in the comment okay so remember 
this is a correct statement alt is a more specific liver biomarker than ast so this is correct now ggt is elevated in alcoholic liver disease but it is not specific to alcoholic liver disease okay so what is what does ggt uh, you know indicate yes it's used as a marker of you know alcoholism but it increase reflex cholestasis not alcoholism it is used as a marker of alcoholism it is because it is increased in alcoholic patients but it primarily reflects cholestasis is this clear so this is a wrong statement what about this ast to alt greater than 1 is indicative of alcoholic liver disease this is also correct so in alcoholic liver disease ast is more elevated and ast to alt less than 1 is indicative of viral hepatitis because alt is more specific for hepatitis so ast to alt less than 1 again is a indicator of viral so this also is a correct answer so let's look at some of the very important points so remember uh, specifically alt is more specific as compared to ast when it comes to you know increase in the uh, liver damage hepatocyte damage and what are the enzymes which are increased in cholestasis so one of them is gamma ggt okay gamma glutamyl transferase but remember five nucleotidase and alpha 1 alkaline phosphatase these three are increased all three are increased in cholestasis and another question has been asked which is the most specific to cholestasis so it, remember it will be five nucleotidase okay as compared to alcoholic and viral hepatitis in viral hepatitis alt will be more elevated in alcoholic liver head disease ast will be more you know uh, elevated and ggt is easily inducible by alcohol so it form elevated in all form of fatty liver is this clear another question for exam point of view let's look at this true regarding iso enzymes whatever your correct answer is type in the in the comment which of the following is true regarding iso enzymes so what are iso enzymes forms of same enzyme that catalyze different reactions so we know that iso enzymes are forms of same enzyme but do they react catalyze different reaction or same reaction so remember they will always catalyze the same reaction so these two we will completely throw out in exam this is how you are going to rule out options okay because then you will be able to focus which one is so forms of the same enzyme forms of the different enzyme because it is written as iso which means same enzyme so forms of the same enzyme that catalyzes the same reaction so these have the same chemical properties but different for physical properties okay so remember iso enzymes in same enzyme because they are same enzyme they will catalyze the same reaction but how are they different they have different physical properties so chemically they will act the same but physical properties will be different so again it's a very very high yield iso enzymes are super high yield topic for your examination let's look at another question heme biosynthesis does not occur in now this is a very favoritely repeated question you should not get it wrong it's a simple question also where does heme biosynthesis does not occur can anyone write in the comment is it osteocyte is it liver is it rbc is it erythroid cells of bone marrow now here obviously it's much easier to say that rbcs does not have heme biosynthesis so all you know uh, heme biosynthesis happens in the erythroid cells and once they become mature rbcs there is no heme synthesis and why is it so can anyone tell me why does heme biosynthesis does not take place in rbc because we know heme biosynthesis heme biosynthesis where does it start it just starts in mitochondria the first step will start and ends in mitochondria okay so first two steps will take in mitochondria then in cytoplasm and again the last few steps will take in mitochondria and we know rbc has no mitochondria and hence no heme biosynthesis is possible in rbcs clear let's look at this question the puric acid is formed from the conjugation of can you write this answer the puric acid is formed from the conjugation of your options are benzoic acid with glycine phenyl acetic acid with glutamine glucuronic acid with glutamine and cysteine with glutathione okay anyone 
so here it's a very very important thing and this principle is actually used in treatment of urea cycle disorders can anyone still put their answer in the comment very good so remember it is benzoic acid with glycine this will form hepuric acid okay and this hepuric acid is water soluble and can be excreted in urine okay so this is why you know we give so uh, you know sodium benzoate in urea cycle disorder that sodium benzoate will combine with glycine and remove the excess nitrogen from the body and this is why it is used in treatment of urea cycle disorder clear so one mole of sodium benzoate will remove one mole of glycine which means one mole of nitrogen okay is this clear again a very very important question from urea cycle disorders let's look at this question this appeared again this came in neat pg okay which of the following deficiency does not cause dilated cardiomyopathy which of the following you know does not cause dilated cardiomyopathy okay so here anyone can anyone write in the answer which of the following does not cause dilated cardiomyopathy so selenium we know carditine we know for sure how about calcium and magnesium we know calcium has a lot to do with contractility so again its deficiency may cause dilated cardiomyopathy the correct answer is manganese what are the manifestation so we know manganese is a part of superoxide dismutase okay the enzyme which is basically an antioxidant okay so a deficiency of manganese it's a very critical will primarily lead to delayed wound healing and some amount of uh, basically uh, delayed in the bone development okay bone demineralization will happen along with delayed bone healing so what are the uh, conditions or what are the deficiency which are associated with cardiomyopathy let's have a look at that also okay thymine selenium carnitine calcium phosphate and magnesium very very important dilated cardiomyopathy causes nutritional causes again very important let's look at this cranio tapes in children is seen with the deficiency of following vitamin this everyone can answer your option a is vitamin d option b is vitamin a option c is vitamin e and option d is vitamin c so what is cranio tapes basically when a newborn is born his bones are very soft and pliable but after some time generally 6 to 8 months you know those bones will start mineralizing okay and then it will no longer be soft and pliable but if it is seen beyond 12 months or 24 months that is called as cranio tapes so when you touch the you know uh, skull of that baby it will be very pliable soft like a ping pong even after 24 months so that is called as cranio tapes and it is primarily due to vitamin d because vitamin d deficiency will lead to decrease in the mineralization of the bone okay so vitamin d deficiency will manifest itself as cranio tapes i mean i got another very favorite this year neat pg has almost 15 18 questions on vitamins so this is another vitamin d deficiency question which of the following is not seen in vitamin d deficiency okay now remember vitamin d deficiency okay if it will happen so what will happen so there will be increased in the demineralization of the bone and all that calcium will come out in urine okay and along with the calcium remember calcium and phosphate goes together so along with the calcium what will happen phosphate will also come out so in the blood the value of calcium and value of phosphate will come down but in the urine calcium and phosphate will increase any doubt in that so let's look at the option increase alkaline phosphate yes because there is a demineralization of the bone there will be a increase in the alkaline phosphate decrease phosphate in the urine we seen that in urine the phosphate is coming out so this will be a incorrect option hypophosphatemia yes we have seen in blood both calcium and phosphate is coming down so this will be this will also correct so the correct answer is b is it clear all of you 
so let's look at another and probably the last question for today's session and this question is the cap cmp regulator in lac operon is known for which of the following function so when we talk about cap cyclic amp so what is it known for is it a positive regulator is it a negative regulator okay or is it a constitutive expression or both b and c anyone write in the comment so cap is basically a positive regulator so we'll look at the lac operon and then i will tell you the you know option uh, you know to understand this question so this is the normal lac operon gene so lac i it means the inhibitor cre promoter operator and then lac z y and a genes are there remember this is an example for polycystronic gene why because more than one gene are under the control of a single promoter so if this promoter is on all the genes will be transcribed is it clear very simple to understand why it is called as polycystronic gene because more than one gene is under the same promoter and this is an example of a prokaryote okay in eukaryotes in eukaryotes we have mono cystronic gene which means a single gene will have a single promoter any doubt in this so what happens is lac i is a constitutional gene which means it is always expressing so this lac i will always keep promoting this i means inhibitors which will go and attach itself here so once the inhibitor gets attached to the promoter region what will happen no transcription is going to happen okay now let's introduce this you know let's introduce this uh, in lactose so the moment lactose come it will bind here and it will remove the it will remove the inhibitors and the moment inhibitor is removed so now the promoter site is open and now all these genes can be transcribed so lac z gene will be transcribed to beta galactosidase protein which will help in breakdown of lactose lac y will form permease which will facilitate plate further entry of lactose and lac a gene will i know form thiogalactoside trans acetylase which will be again allowing entry of lactose so this is what it is now let's bring oxygen uh, glucose into the equation so if the glucose is absent what is going to happen okay glucose level and cyclic amp level are inversely proportional so when glucose level comes down cyclic amp level will go up and this cyclic amp level if it goes up this cyclic amp attaches with cap okay catabolite activated protein and the dimer will go and find find on the cre which means in this case if the promoter is free it will increase the rate of transcription of all these three if the promoter is not free it will not lead to any action so that is why it is called as a positive regulator okay that is why it is called as a positive regulator okay if the glucose is present okay so this is so that is why it is called as a positive regulator right so this brings us to end of today's session i know today uh, there was some challenge in terms of starting the session and as i end you i'll talk about why revision when i'm talking to my students most of the students will say sir revision is a very very big challenge okay and why revision is a challenge because there are lots of information which you have to remember revision is absolutely boring and even when you revise you keep forgetting so what should you do so we have created some tool called as medico apps concept card which will represent only high yield topics all the information will be given in forms of images and flow chart and which will you know give you active learning you no know, normally when you see a information you have to learn it but in concept card there is a question followed by information so when you see the question you typically try to answer it and when you swipe it you will get now if you want to experience with pass master cards or this concept cards you can actually go to our instagram page and uh, there you can see that or you can download uh, the app itself uh, the play store uh link will be shared in the description of this particular session and then you can get a feedback okay it's a free trial 14 days but it is really really great for revision especially for busy doctors you know who find it very very difficult and boring to revise so these are the session plan session 1 i have taken tomorrow is session 2 18 again at 4:30 so all these sessions are scheduled to be at 4:30 maybe get delayed by 15 20 minutes sometimes but generally i'll try to be starting them on 4:30 
and again if you have not subscribed make sure you subscribe hit the bell icon give this video a thumbs up and if you have any question on this session you can just put it in query if you have any suggestion you can put it in the comment and i would love if you can share this video so thank you so much guys thank you so much for attending this session take care and again let me uh, let us meet again tomorrow for another such session